And welcome back to Your Regina 120. I'm Jeff Cliff, and this is a series of videos of 120 things that I learned as a student at the University of Regina. And today we're going to be talking about the package deal fallacy. Yet another logical fallacy. Surprise, surprise. So how this is going to work is it's going to be uh, making and misusing the, uh, I guess, conjunct or conjunctive uh, uh, logical connective or the word and. So it's usually going to be of the form you have x and y, so two things that either happen or some properties or some something that you can compare uh, to their, their being uh, together in a lot of different situations. So if you see that X and Y are mostly go together, therefore X and Y cannot be separated. Uh, now, this isn't actually a logically valid way of doing things. Uh, there's a uh, implicit usually there, uh, and an implicit uh, way that these two things are related. Uh, and that, similar to some of the previous videos where uh, your the, the, the rule um, where you know there, there's kind of a general rule and you, you assume that that general rule is always the case this is similar to that in, in the sense that you know yes it's generally true that X and Y go together but it's not the case that they cannot be separated um, and so we, we, we can look at this in a couple of different ways uh, and Ayn Rand uh, viewed this in terms of essentials and non-essentials, or essential properties and non-essential properties. Now, we, we can say whatever we want about you know, a lot of other things that she believed, uh, but this is actually one of those situations where she was actually kind of onto something, uh, and that you, if you frame the relationship between X and Y as something that can, uh, it, it's absolutely necessary to the, the functioning of the universe, or uh, your, whether it's just something that human choice has, has determined, you'll notice that there's different ways in which, or, or, or different levels of necessity that uh, kind of exist between those two extremes. Uh, and it's worth considering that, uh, I mean, she, she would have thought that, or she was very concerned that if you uh, believed uh, thing, or essential things uh, to be non-essential, you would go astray. And that's true. Uh, but it's, it's, it's worth looking into why uh, things are considered essential, and, and the strength are of our belief in the rules that govern our life, and the, the strength in our belief in the rules that govern the way that we understand the, the physical world and the social world as well, to operate. So, for example, uh, if you observe in, in practice and go out and do this experiment where you have two point-like particles, maybe billiard balls, floating around in a vacuum, do they observe the um, conservation of momentum when they uh, encounter each other. You know, you, you have two billiard balls. You, you know, hit them together. Do the, the angles add up to the way that you would normally expect? Do the the the, the mass and the velocity uh, add up in the way that you would normally expect? It's it's probably something that's pretty close to what you uh, would would observe uh, in in general. Whereas there's a lot of things that you can understand and a lot of things that you can a lot of experiments that you can do that you'll get the right results some of the time. You know, you you plant and plant. You, you watch it grow, it'll, it'll usually grow if you give it r the right kind of sunlight and the right kind of nutri nutrition and the right kind of access to carbon dioxide, etc. Um, th th there's ways in which the, the physical world operates and sometimes there are confounding factors and sometimes there are. But the, the important thing to note here is that when you have um, the, or when you treat things that are, are almost certain or, or things that you understand very well, as though uh, they are the same thing as things you don't understand very well, and, and things that go together just by happenstance, you'll probably sometimes get uh, kind of confused and lost by doing so. Uh, and so you should always be wary of the amount of certainty you have in the the, the things you're observing and, and the, the 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 level of the rule that you're trying to uh, to express um, and its certainty. 
Uh, it's also related a little bit to the idea of false equivalents and to analogies, as we talked about in previous videos, uh, in that it's going to come up when you're reasoning about things that you don't have a full understanding of, uh, and when you're uh, reasoning specifically about when this comes up when you're talking about groups, and specifically outgroups, i.e. Uh, groups that you do not belong to, i.e. Uh, are not your in-group, and that you don't have a deep understanding of due to your lack of membership and exposure to this group. Here's an example. I used to believe that conservatives uh, in this country, here in Canada, have no fiscal or personal responsibility. Just from exposure to the conservatives and the conservatives that were re leading the governments in the places that I lived, uh, that was just something that I kind of picked up and I associated with conservative conservatism more generally. And so this actually came as a shock to conservatives that I would encounter uh, when I would try to convince them uh, that, hey, that they probably have no fiscal responsibility because they're conservative. And so it's a package deal to me to view fiscal irresponsibility and the uh, ability to be willing to uh, throw a government right into deficit territory uh, and so on and so forth. So this was very confusing to them who, because the, a lot of conservatives honestly believe that governments shouldn't have deficits, that they shouldn't go into debt. And so if I came to, uh, up to a conservative and told them this uh, and tried to tell them that they were a conservative, therefore they believe in deficit spending, that would be jumping the gun. Uh, and that would be actually uh, making a mistake and assuming that the two things are a package uh, when, in fact, in practice, they are not. Um, you know, we, we can look into the, the reasons why, uh, you know, that, that, that the idea kind of persists and why there are still conservative voters. But again, uh, things are not always as uh, uh, simple as they appear. And there, there may be reasons why people might vote uh, for a government that goes into deficits consistently, even though uh, they believe that that is actually mistaken. But we'll, we'll get into it in that in a bit. Uh, it's how about some examples here, just to kind of clear out how this is going to work. So, if you, if you would have guessed before Stephen Harper appointed the majority of the current members of the Supreme Court of Canada, whether or not the members of the Supreme Court of Canada would be uh, radically regressive and be willing to put uh, or allow him to continue to pass unconstitutional uh, le legislation without legal challenge, you would have uh, been mistaken. This is actually something that has happened in terms of Harper has appointed a majority of the Supreme Court of Canada, and yet we do not see uh, his laws passing the Supreme Court uh, carte blanche. They are often taken apart and picked apart entirely, and and, sh and uh, the Supreme Court has on multiple occasions uh, been very vocal about the unconstitutionality of the laws passed in Canada. Uh, so, again, it's, it, if you would have assumed that there's a package deal between conservatives and appointing dangerous people to the Supreme Court, you would have been misled. So the, the idea of a package deal, of course, comes from advertising. It comes from the marketplace, where you're often chance only given the option to purchase things in a certain combination. So you, you, know, you, you go to your telephone provider, you want to buy a cell phone, you have to get a plan. You have to, often, it's, they really encourage you to have the same cell phone provider, television provider, internet provider, etc. It's all attempted to be a plan or a package that you buy everything at once. And it turns out that this is a really good deal for them because if they can control your per where you purchase all of these things, and if they can, quote, tie uh, all of this together, they can have a significant amount of power over you in the marketplace as a consumer. Um, so when thinking back to the fact that we're talking about this in, in the context of logical fallacies, if you are being given a package uh, or, 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 a, or, a, or a deal or a, or a way of thinking about things, be careful that you are not uh, disadvantaged by taking it and accepting it as, as kind of the, the only way that things can, can be or the, the only way that things can be perceived. Because often enough, uh, you can be, you know, uh, the, the particular uh, arrangement is not necessarily to your benefit. Uh, so, uh, again, th this is something that, that, that is, it is going to com come up in many different situations. Uh, it, it, as mentioned, it, it, it's something that comes up in political situations, and it comes up, you'll, you'll be able to see it a little bit more clearly if you look at other countries' political situations. So go 
if, if you want to go deeper into this, see if you can dig up some newspapers of some, uh, some countries that you don't normally pay attention. So if you normally watch American news or something, go go look up some European newspapers and see, especially countries with uh, two party systems, like two political parties with the vast majority of the po power in the country. And you, you can usually see that this is an obvious problem because the way uh, outsiders are will tend to perceive it uh, will be uh, a little bit more clear because our reputation is not on the line uh, for the particular uh, political issues that they're going back and forth on. And so you can usually see very clearly uh, when one side is adapted or adopted some kind of uh, belief for political purposes, especially short-term political purposes, uh, and when they try to pass off, uh, again, the, the combination of many beliefs as interlinked and necessarily interlinked. Uh, so, uh, again, hopefully in the future, as you go on, uh, you can uh, look to see when you see two things going together, uh, try to, to consider how certain you are that those two things are going together. Is it certain on a physics level, like I, is the universe absolutely structured in such a way that they have to go together always and without exception? Uh, is it a, a, a matter of the you know, is it a matter of chemistry? Is it a matter of uh, biology? Is it a matter of, you know, the, the, the social aspect of it? Uh, you know, on every level, there's a, a degree of uncertainty that's in introduced, and you want to be very wary of where that degree of uncertainty is for whatever it is you're trying to deal with. Uh, and another word of caution uh, worth pointing out is that, uh, quote, never underestimate the human uh, ability to adapt, which is kind of critical here because in each of those levels of uncertainty, each of the layers of uncertainty, it's possible that human beings who have the interest of doing so uh, can find a way of, of dealing with the situation differently than you might expect. And so if you assume that people can't deal with some, or living in some manner, you know, just look at the, the thousands of years of evidence that we have of human beings living very different lives than the ones we live, no matter who you are. Uh, and a lot of people have survived and thrived in situations that look very different from the ones that we currently exist in. And so in many of those situations, X and Y, or any X and Y, did not go together, even if we assume in our life and in our world that most of the time it does. So hopefully this is uh, something that makes sense, although the audience kind of showed up late. Uh, any questions from the audience today? Um, no, not really. Okay. Well, uh, hopefully you enjoy, and we will see you next video when we talk about a very similar uh, logical fallacy. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, false dilemma fa fallacy. So, see you then.